Oh, hey there. It's Ken Hinckley, Microsoft Research. And I'm here for the test of time travel uh, session. What Because what I have here from the year 1999 is the Cassiopeia E100 mobile computer. Uh, and it has, this one's a little bit unusual because I've been doing some work on it. It has some strange sensors attached to it. Uh, this is the device that we actually used for the work back in the day. And I'm going to tell you all about it here. So yeah, here's the device. Um, as you can see, it's got a very high tech system for connecting the sensor to the bottom. This is actually the serial port from inside the, the connector, which I hacked apart. Uh, and in the top, we have all these funky sensors. Uh, these were carefully crafted in place by ripping out the compact flash slot and um, throwing it in the trash. Um, but it gave me just enough room to put some sensors in there, which proved to be interesting. Here we see a simple demonstration of the sensor response. Here we see a simple application of zooming a font on the screen. This is just a demonstration of the sensor and not really intended as an end user application. We also have a touch sensor which senses physical contact with the device, such as when you're holding it. Stop touching me. We're right now uh, working on a paper about this topic. Uh, we've called it Sensing Techniques for Mobile Interaction. Uh, we just sent it in. I'm hoping the reviewers like it. I'm a little worried about R2 uh, deciding that it needs some further work. Uh, uh, and these are the ingredients that we're combining to do some fun things. Picking up and looking at the device turns on the power. The sensors respond only when you're holding the device and looking at it. So if you push the device out of the way, it will not turn on. Similarly, the device will not turn on while in a briefcase or purse, if, even if it's being shaken around. The user can set the display mode simply by turning the device. Whoa, I'm not sure what happened there. I think there's been a bit of a glitch in the time stream, but bear with me here. Uh, I've been doing some work in this device. Uh, it's looking a bit more um, polished. Um, yeah, so I can pick it up. Uh, and when I do so, it automatically turns itself on. Uh, although I still have to enter a pin. Security these days, I tell you. Uh, when I do so, I've got this picture on the screen and I just came up with this technique. You can tilt the device and, oh, and it rotates. Hey, that's, that's kind of cool. Well, how'd that animation get so good? I don't remember doing that uh, in 1999 here. Uh, wow, I'm, this is really quite strange. Pretty cool though. Um, but basically, yeah, this is what we worked on in our paper back in those days. Uh, and it seems like it's, it's kind of everywhere here now in the year 2017. Uh, so there you have it. I have a very carefully crafted scientific argument for why we did this work. Um, and I think to provide this perspective, um, I'm going to compare mobile devices uh, to my cat. Uh, here we go. Uh, there's my mobile device circa 1999 on the left. Uh, and there's my cat, Mr. Cleo, on the right. Uh, sadly, he is no longer with us after 20 years, but I guess that's what happens. Um, now, with my mobile device, um, first off, it's relatively unaware of its environment, whereas my cat is aware of sounds and objects. Uh, my mobile device is oblivious to my presence, it interrupts me all the time. Uh, the cat knows if I walk in the room. Now, with the mobile device, it overall leads to its experience where it's relatively selfish and inconsiderate. Uh, however, this is where the, the comparison with the cat fails because the cat is also selfish and inconsiderate, but um, very cuddly. So I imagine you're asking yourself right now, why the heck would somebody do this? And to be honest, when we first started the project, I didn't know either. And that's okay sometimes when you're doing research. Um, we had done a bunch of work previously with sensing when you were gripping devices, for example, just knowing that you're holding it. And we thought, hey, maybe that would be cool for mobile. So we started building a prototype. Uh, then I started talking to Mike's Claire down in the hardware lab, and he was playing with various types of range sensors. Um, and also he had just gotten in some prototypes, a little evaluation board of a tilt sensor that could sense left, right, up, down movement. Um, and so we basically put some hot glue and some wires into the back of our device and we started playing with those ideas. And for a long time, uh, nothing happened. Uh, we had quite a few ideas that just didn't work out. We were playing with things, we had little one-offs. Uh, and, and for quite a while, I actually felt like the project was a total failure, uh, to be bluntly honest about it. Um, but, but at some point, we kind of realized like, hey, maybe if you turn the screen aside, it could rotate the, the, the image on the display for switching between portrait and landscape, which if you remember the experience of these devices require you to go into the settings and play with these menus. 
Uh, and it was such a pain to do that essentially you would never switch the display orientation. Yet, you know, it's part of the vocabulary of using these devices. Sometimes you want to look at something this way. Um, sometimes you just want to pick up your device to use it. Uh, these are all sort of natural gestures and sort of a natural vocabulary of how people use uh, mobile implements of various types that were being completely ignored by devices. And so eventually we realized that putting these sensors in the devices would let us sense these things and do all kinds of fun and interesting tricks. Um, so we had a, a number, of, number of techniques appeared in this uh, paper, uh, which has been out for not quite 20 years now, I guess. I misspoke a bit earlier, but it feels that way. It's been quite a while. Um, and some of them have entered daily use. Some of them, uh, like we had this idea of uh, maybe if you tip the display, it could automatically do scrolling. Uh, bad idea. I don't recommend that. Um, it's in the paper, but maybe you can just ignore that part. Uh, <laughs> so sometimes, you know, there's, there's, we tried all kinds of things. We tried to look at various experiences. Uh, some of them have stood the test of time. Others, uh, maybe not so much so. So yeah, I think, you know, what surprises me the most about the work now is just how darned obvious much of it seems at this point. Uh, and in fact, another thing that surprises me is how many ideas we missed in this space. There's been a gigantic space of uh, people who've built on this basic idea of combining multiple sensors on a mobile device and done all kinds of cool things with them, which we just flat didn't think of back in the day. Um, and in fact, you know, I've sort of had a career of, it seems like every other year I uh, encounter another one of these obvious ideas about how we could use sensing and devices and I publish that paper too. So uh, at times being incompetent can be a good career strategy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're still having fun in this space. You know, even just within the last year or two, I've published papers on sensing on mobile devices. Uh, so it keeps coming around. And uh, I guess I would encourage you all to be thinking about these sorts of sensors, interesting ways to use them, uh, because there's many ideas that are still out there that are just hiding in plain sight that nobody has noticed yet. And uh, you could be the one giving such a speech uh, 15 or 20 years from now. So good luck and thanks very much for your, much for your time.